Hi, I'm Keith Bachman, Danfall CMS Trainer, and in today's video, we'll be discussing the connections and settings of the network communications. So in this video, we'll be talking about the network connections uh, for the SM800A. Uh, we're gonna look at this in three different scenarios, the first one being the hardware. Then we'll follow up uh, as if we're in front of the control, that this will be uh, PowerPoint slides that you'll be looking at uh, on some of that. And then uh, we'll actually go live on a computer. So we just get to see all the vari variables uh, with this application. So in this slide here, uh, as you can see, we have three units sitting, uh, which could very well be in a store. Uh, that's what this slide is trying to indicate, that we have them at a given site. Uh, each of these controls requires a CAT6 cable, and that cable gets hooked into some uh, area network. Uh, this is the LAN, the local area network. Uh, very, very often is what will be in the store. There will be a router sitting there. We'll have uh, each of these CAT6 cables connected into the router. And now that allows um, these controls to be accessed from either all, uh, residing inside this LAN, such as this computer right here, so it might be up in the front of the store, it might be in maybe a manager's office, but they would have access to the controls. Uh, and then the other option is outside of the site. Um, this would be possibly Danfoss having access to uh, a customer's stores or uh, you know their, their uh, network of stores. And we do that through some level of tunneling solution or some sort of a firewall. And this becomes important because as we get into programming, we'll be looking at that. So as you can see, if you agree to a tunneling solution between the customer and Danfoss, you can create uh, this application here where we have a throughput into their local area network, which gives us access to the controls. And with these CAT5, uh, CAT6 cables being connected to these controls, it also allows them to talk between each other uh, so as they pass information back and forth. Another form of creating a host network uh, would not be using the store's uh, LAN, local area network, but we could put in our own. So in this application, you can see that there's just a very small network switch being used. We take the three controls, we have each of them wired into this network switch, and now they will, in fact, talk with each other. They will create a host network with the three of them tied in. With these open ports on here, we could actually tie our computer in, and we could now, via our computer, have access to these three controls as well. They do need to be programmed up. We'll talk about that in a bit. On the control, again, we're talking hardware here. There are two RJ45 connection points. There's one that sets external here. Notice it's future local bus application. So we're not using this one uh, at this stage of the game. The one that we do use sits internal here. It is um, just sitting right underneath the, uh, the top lid there. And that's where you would make your connection for the or ethernet. Now this picture is really just a overview and it's one that is in the manual. So um, if you're ever in question, just go straight to the manual. Uh, you can see here the, the connection is right here. And uh, we're talking about this one and it shows you the external one here as well, but notice it's for uh, later use. Now, Every time you have a control, when you initially are setting up this control, you are going to be required to go through a wizard of these five screens. There's actually a few more screens, but these are the ones that have the information from uh, a programming setup perspective. Uh, the one that we're interested in right now is going to be slide number five right here, and it has to do with the internet. So when you're setting up uh, in this wizard. Uh, this is not a requirement in the wizard to do this, but it is available to you. It makes uh, it somewhat easy to do. Uh, so it is recommended to go ahead and set up in this fashion. 
uh, I'll just quickly just uh, show that the uh, internet is turned on uh, in this application. They're using DHCP. We'll talk about that here shortly. Um, and we're saying that there's no host network and there's no external internet either. Uh, so uh, very, very simple setup right here with DHCP uh, being turned on. Of course, you would follow through the rest of them and it resets the control. And then whatever you programmed on the, these five different slides would now be uh, pre-set up in the control. Now, we are done with the wizard and the unit now is operational. And when we are, pro are uh, logged in, because we have to know our credentials to be able to log into the control. Right here would be the menu option. So when we press on that, we get this. And you can see there's quick links. Uh, and one of those quick links is called Ethernet. So this is where we would go at the control in order to uh, set up our, our parameters. When you get to this Ethernet uh, option, the this is the slide that will show up and there's two different uh, menu options at the top. One is called status. The other one is called configuration. So in the status, as the term states, uh, we're running live and this is the information that it has to work with. Um, so we know the gateway, we know the mask, we know the IP address. Now, if we get down to uh, this lower section, are you going to be using a host network? It would already have to be enabled here. Uh, that would be done under the configuration. It knows that this unit is the master because it's unit zero. And then it says that we have five units uh, that are on here. There would be a listing of these five units here and telling us that they're online. We will look at that in a little bit here as well. If you need to do some further configuration, you will press the configuration option. And something that uh, is new to the control is going to be this press to initialize. Now, if I make changes to my network connections, then I'm going to go to initialize uh, to activate those changes that I just made. Previously, we used to have to reset the control, but we no longer have to do that. We can simply do the press to initialize. If your host network didn't come up, if you're not successful getting online with the control, always go to this configuration area and then to press the initialize. It does give us the option to reset as well. Um, so if you so choose, you could reset your control there. We have those two Ethernet ports. We looked at them just a bit ago, but Ethernet zero is the only active one. So this Ethernet one, I did tell you, was uh, for future use, so it's in up. So we just keep it disabled. Uh, but Ethernet uh, zero is enabled. And as you can see, it'll tell you if it is detected. If we are using HTTPS, where in this instance, you can see that it's turned off, but if we did, in fact, turn it on, then we're going to be using secure networking. So when I'm using a web application to uh, a, a web browser to gain access to the control, I have to be set up and knowing that I'm coming in through a secure. So the HTTPS means that I'm coming in on the secure uh, on the secure side. Uh, we do still allow for it to be turned off. For those who might not be using that or don't choose to use it, uh, there will be a future point when we release that we will uh, only have HTTPS available. But for right now and then going into the foreseeable future, we will allow that switch to be turned on or off. The page goes on down. We have DNS, we have DHCP. Uh, if I wanted to assign an IP address, I'm going to turn on DHCP. Uh, DNS would be given a name to the uh, controls IP versus using an actual IP address. These are uh, items that would be set up by an IT department. Here you can see I have the gateway, the network mask, and the IP address. All of these would get programmed in. If I have a host network, I'm going to turn it on. I say how many controls are on the host network. And if this unit was 
the zero unit, it will be known as the master. All others will be called slave units. And then lastly, I have the external internet. So if I, such as I mentioned previous, if Dan Falls um, is on the other side of the firewall and we have a VPN application to uh, gain access through the firewall, that's where we'll use this external internet. So we'll turn on, say one, we will use uh, the Dan Falls IP address, not what's in the control, but the Dan Falls IP address, and that'll give us access into this unit. All right, so we've now gone to a live control, uh, but this control is actually a test unit. It's sitting beside me. Uh, I am hooked into a local network, uh, into a router in a local network uh, right beside me here as well. I'm on the dashboard screen. We want to go and look at the communications. So we're going to go to the configuration. And under the configuration, we will go to COM. This screen should look familiar. We just looked at it a minute ago uh, on the PowerPoint. You can see we have press to initialize. If you recall, that was under the configuration section. Press to reset the unit also was under the configuration section. We get down to Ethernet zero, it's enabled. Ethernet one is not, that is the external RJ45 on the unit. And we know we're not using that. Uh, and then we get down here to HTTPS and we have it turned on. Now, that means that we are going to be using a secure network. That means that our information is encrypted. Uh, so that is the difference between uh, just HTTP and HTTPS. Um, when we have it turned on, then you get another option here, but this defaults to yes. There's, you're never going to have to change that. That'll be fine. Just leaving that as yes. Uh, the options down here for DNS, which is uh, having a DNS server that will uh, give you a, a, a spelling out of an IP address versus a, a specific IP address. So that's usually handled by an IT department. And then DHCP is, in fact, turned on. Well, it's here it's plugged into a router. The router assigns the IP address, and that's what this DHCP does. It assigns it, and this is the app. Uh, address that it assigned to it. If I turned it off, you'll see that it is still going to maintain that IP address, but this is where an IT department would give you this information to plug into the controller. So you will find it that they might use DHCP, or if they don't, you will turn it to no, and then they're going to uh, give you the default gateway, the network mask and the IP address. If you have more than one unit, you're gonna use a host network. So you would enable this, you would say how many controls you had on your host network. Here, because it's on a test unit, we have just but one. Uh, we will look here in a second at a host network that is active. And this unit is address is zero. That's why it's called the master unit. Anything else will uh, be called a slave unit. And if I had the need of setting up a VPN to get in through some level of firewall, then I would say I have one external internet. And when I do that, I then have to put the IP address of using that VPN. And then lastly, uh, when I use this uh, HTTPS that you see right here with yes, then I get the web server port is 443. So that is the default for when you're using uh, HTTPS. In the past with just HTTP, the web port was 80. Uh, sometimes that's important to know. So just realize that there are two different ones. And then last thing on here, network time timing support. If you have some web uh, application where you can get the time from that, you could use that option simply by turning it on and then programming in uh, the IP address of that uh, timing device. So we now have uh, connected into a live store uh, for the purpose of just seeing a few things live. Uh, in this uh, area here, if I would go to info, 
Of course, you can see that there is five units there. My purpose is to see that they are all connected and online on the host network. So I could really go to any one of them. If I just simply go to the first one, I am now going to go to internet. And as you notice right here, it's showing the five units and it's showing all five of them being online. And so that is how I would go and quickly validate that my host network is up and operational and every one of the controls is online. If any one of them would drop offline, it would alarm out and tell us as such. And of course, you can see there's other information sitting here as well, such as the um, uh, IP information uh, and a few other things tied to the uh, internet. Uh, now, the other option is when I go under configuration and I go to this com, we can again see all the information that was initially set up here, for instance, is where uh, an external internet is being used. And you can see that it has an IP address assigned to that. Uh, here, we know that the uh, HTTPS is actually turned off. The web port is 80. So there are some differences uh, depending on which site you're at. If I would go to unit number one uh, and again go to com, just to show that now we know this is a slave unit. Each unit is required to have its own specific IP address. Uh, and then that way they can be looked at individually. And in fact, when I log in, I could go to any one of the controls if I know its IP address and log into that control. Uh, and this, but as long as it's on a host network, I have uh, access to the incomplete host network, which would be all the controllers. And then when I'm on the dashboard, all five controllers would be sitting here. As we can see, I got all five. Thank you for watching our video and for more documentation and videos on the system manager, please visit danfoss.com slash supermarket support.